So as we can see, uh, this is how it looks like. Oh, okay, so you just have to uh, don't confuse yourselves with the uh, with the dump files, but these are basically uh, just the uh, the files. And the parent Terraform script is this one. Uh, this is just a declaration of the uh, instance that will be created with the uh, with the correct elements. And uh, this is the important part, is basically the declaration of having a module or instantiating a module. So I call it the auto stop hyphen stop hyphen module. Okay, so um, at this point, it will, be, uh, it will be important to emphasize that whatever you declare as a variable for, for this one, the tag name or the tag key, okay, this will be picked up uh, by the Lambda function as the, the key or the tag key. Uh, that will that uh, for instances that will need to be auto automatically stopped. Okay, so whatever you declare here, okay, it must exist as a tag in those relevant instances that you need to stop uh, based on the schedule. Okay, so this could be self-defined, but uh, yeah, uh, just to re-emphasize that you need to uh, you know uh, whatever you declare here will be picked up by the lambda function. Okay, as the instruction to detect or make a list. Uh, make a Python list in it uh, in the cache of the uh, Lambda function script. Okay, to make a list of all those easy to instances that, uh, that are relevant and which need to be um, stopped. Okay, just to take a sneak peek into uh, our um, directory wherein we have the Terraform module. Here we go. So uh, the uh, child Terraform script inside the uh, module folder uh, has some declarations on. Um, the roles, so it's actually this part. So how is it instantiated? It's basically um, based on your JSON uh, templates right here. And there's a files uh, directory just adjacent to this um, child Terraform script. So let's uh, take a, a peek uh, into that. So if you look at what we call the Lambda policy.json, it's important to note that um, you need a stop instance action as part of the IAM policy uh, for it to be able to execute uh, properly. Okay, uh, I only added the start instances just for testing and don't be confused with the uh, remaining five actions or permissions or privileges because those are options of the previous use case. Okay, there we go. So uh, yeah, let's uh, go. Oh, before we just go, let's... Uh, just uh, remind ourselves on uh, the source of the Python script itself. It's uh, here in the subdirectory of uh, that one, and it's there. Uh, we'll explain the behavior later of how the Python script will work or will behave um, where we uh, do the Terraform apply. So let's now instantiate everything. Go to the uh, parent directory and uh, do a uh, Terraform plan just to see the blueprint of uh, the components or the resources, the Terraform resources that will be instantiated based on our um, objective here. Okay, here we go. So basically, here are the components or the resources, AWS resources that will be uh, created by our Terraform uh, script and our Terraform module. Okay, so let's go ahead, do a Terraform apply. And then we hit the value of yes. And then there we go. The 
actual creation of the resources. Okay, so it's apply complete. So uh, what happened was uh, that uh, when we hit Terraform apply, it created these um, components or AWS resources. Okay, uh, let's now take a look um, into my EC2 management console. So um, before refresh, okay, previously we don't have EC2 instances, we don't have components yet for US EC2. So let's just refresh that thing or that page. Okay, we now have one uh, test instance uh, because that was uh, that was a part of this instruction. And then uh, let's go to EC2 dashboard um, just to uh, see that we have uh, one running instance right there. And then let's go uh, check with our Lambda, see that we have a newly created um, Lambda function. So you can see it's one minute ago, last modified. Uh, let's take a look inside. And then, okay, so um, here is basically our, um, our uh, Python uh, script. Okay, our Python script is the one picked up from the, uh, from the uh, uh, file uh, we have inside the uh, subfolder of the, uh, uh, the module, okay? So um, let's explain uh, how it's gonna behave. Uh, it's a simplified one, um, a simplified uh, Python script. Uh, from the previous use case, wherein I reused the uh, importations of Boto3 config parser, uh, quite important, I'll explain why, and then the Boto core, and then uh, some stuff, okay. So here, uh, why do we have config parser? It's because um, we need to pick up the declared uh, variables of the tag, okay, that you want. So if you remember, in the main, uh, in the parent Terraform script, if we declared auto stop, if we declared that we want to, um, to automatically stop the instances that have a tag key named auto stop. It has to be passed here, okay? So it basically passed here and then was picked up by the uh, Terraform script to be contained in a vars.ini file. So what we need to do is actually um, create an instruction that, um, that will parse a config file beside it, beside our Python script. Okay, it's gonna read content from a file called vars.ini. So if you can see, if we can see the vars.ini, it's basically that one. So I designed it to be uh, to be like this because I only uh, chose that it will only pick up the uh, the declaration of the variable tag called auto stop. Okay, if you basically change uh, the declaration of the Terraform script, you really have to rerun the okay or recreate the component based on your changes in Terraform script, but what, this is what we have right now. Okay, so uh, based on this, it's gonna read or parse content from vars.ini. Okay, and then this instruction called config.get will actually instruct the Python script, okay, to get the, uh, the value, okay, to parse from, let's go back from main section and then the value of ec2 underscore instance underscore tag. Okay, and then uh, here there's a declaration of the actual Lambda, Lambda handler, okay, wherein you have Boto3, okay, the module used by Python to manipulate cloud resources, okay, where you have a declaration of filters, okay. This is quite important because of the declaration of filters is actually important so you can actually grep grep all those instances based on tag key um, value of this one, okay? So whatever you declare here as a value of this, um, this uh, variable, okay, auto, now the value is auto stop, okay? The Python script will filter based on that tag key, okay? It's gonna find all instances with a tag key of auto stop, okay? And now here we declare a, um, declare something, an element called instances, which will be equal to what is found in the filter, okay? So it's basically creating a list, okay? And now here we have your uh, conditional expression that for, for instance in instances list, okay, we're gonna stop everything in that list. Okay, so now let us uh, just check. 
an hour um an hour uh an hour EC2 um uh EC2 uh dashboard just to start with to make a good assumption um, here we have a running instance okay now objective is to uh, basically stop it so before we stop it let's just test we need to disable the CloudWatch events because uh, we're just testing so at least we uh, disable the schedule uh, and then we um, what do you call this we uh, basically uh, induce a test okay so to induce a test to see if it works, if the Python script works, is we uh, just uh, configure a test events of any name or any event name, let's say uh, hash hash, or no, uh, let's say hash one or uh, one. Okay, then create that uh, dummy test event and then uh, do a test. Okay, so here, um, it says uh, successfully stopped instance with relevant tag auto stop. Okay, so basically it went through the script and reached the end. Okay, so um, it doesn't refresh the um, the AWS um, AWS dashboard EC2 dashboard. Basically, it doesn't refresh automatically, but in our case, it's luck. We're lucky because uh, you, as you can see, it um, it uh, immediately um, immediately reflected the state. Okay, that it stopped. Okay, so what we want to do is to do another test. Okay, let's do another test, um, not just to see if it can create the list. Okay, so what I did was actually uh, uh, borrow something from the Bodo three, um, yeah, from the Bodo three documentation right here. There we go. <laughs> And then there's a section on just uh, printing all the instances that are found based on your logic. And see, that's Boto3. Okay, let's go back to our, uh, yes, go back to our actual Lambda function for testing. And then change uh, this one, the execution uh, component. Okay, and then save that thing, uh, remove the execution result, and just, just see if it actually creates a list of um, easy to instances that have the relevant tag. So you test that thing using the test, same test. And then here, it's the most important part. This is what we want to see, is that it made a list of, um, of easy to instances that have the relevant tag auto stop. Okay, so as you can see here, that's the instance ID. And let's go back to our one. Okay, this is the, basically the same instance ID that was detected. Okay, so um, what we do is do another test. Okay, so what we do is we manually start this thing. Okay, let's manually start the instance. Okay, now while waiting for it to start up, let's modify the, uh, the Lambda function or the Lambda Python script. Okay, put it back. Let's put it back to instance stop. Okay, save. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna induce a test based on the runtime of the uh, of the OS. So uh, as you can see here, okay, it's a pending state, but oh, okay, it's gonna be initializing. Let's uh, get to um, SSH into it. Okay. Yeah, I think I have still have that uh, right key. Let's see if we can SSH already. Okay, there we go. So uh, it's a newly uh, started um, EC2 instance, zero minutes. Okay, so less than a minute. Okay, over there. So what I do, um, what I do is actually do a while loop. Uh, okay, while true, do what we call a date command. Okay, and then sleep, sleep for two seconds and loop, uh, do it again. Okay, so there's a while loop. So every two seconds, it actually um, outputs the uh, output of the date command. Okay, there you go. So just to see that we have a heartbeat. I just created uh, an artificial heartbeat that the, uh, the OS is running. Every two seconds, it sends out a heartbeat, okay, a date output heartbeat, okay, for lack of a better term. And then what we do is, while the heartbeat is running, let's test or run that Lambda function again. 
Okay. So here. Now we put it back to instant stop. Okay. Based on the conditions, and let's test. Okay. There you go. So here, uh, the uh, the result or the log result is that okay. Okay, these successfully stopped the instance. Okay, and here, the heartbeat just uh, ceased. Okay, there's no more heartbeat. It basically is a sign that the OS just died. Okay, or it's just uh, stopped. Okay, and then uh, let's go back to the EC2 dashboard. Let's see if it refreshes. Okay, that's uh, good. Uh, we're quite lucky uh, at this time of the uh, day because it indicates um, uh, almost in real time that the uh, the um, the um, EC2 instance um, stopped based on the lambda function. Okay, so basically uh, that's it, and 